I must say <coughs> that I very much prefer this Paul Martin. <coughs> and I, uh, <coughs> I think I can also add that I've never heard the Prime Minister of Canada slandered quite so elegantly as from this platform. I am, uh, I am delighted to be here. Uh, President Mary, I feel a touch chagrin because I have nothing to give you, uh, either by way of uh, picturesque material or uh, cash. Uh, so what I shall do after I have finished is to take off my tie and leave it with you because although decoratively you will be unable to discern it, uh, it actually has the streetscape of Rome on the tie and I will tell you that it comes from the Rotary Club of Rome, which is an entire deceit, but exquisite for the purpose. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge, of course, the Lieutenant Governor who, uh, who moved uh, this audience deeply and rightfully. And I think you would want me to say, because I have been taken with it all evening, that Jennifer is a quite wonderful chair for an occasion of this kind. I, uh, I got a kick out of, the, out of the relationship between Rotary and St. Paul's. I know St. Paul's in a slightly different way because it contains the BC Center of Excellence headed by Dr. Julio Montaner, who is by and large one of the great exponents in response to the AIDS pandemic across the world, and I have a feeling may one day win a Nobel Prize for his <laughs> remarkable work. So I've had the occasion to visit St. Paul's uh, from time to time, uh, and it is, of course, a very welcome truth to have with us our colleagues from the United Kingdom, from Japan, and from the Democratic Republic of the Congo, which demonstrates to everyone here what enormous solidarity there is between and among Rotarians around the world. I'm, I'm tickled to be here, but I, I want you to know, uh, I won't belabor this, but I'm exercising an almost supernatural self-discipline. You've called an election, for heaven's sake, and, uh, and all my political juices are churning. Uh, British Columbia, as you know, has the most lunatic political culture in Canada. Uh, and I'm trying desperately to contain my ideological proclivities and behave during the course of the evening. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to join these celebrations. I've had the opportunity to speak to countless numbers of Rotarians in Canada and in the United States and in Africa, and I'm filled with admiration on every occasion. Here in uh, Vancouver, the achievements of the club and the related clubs are extraordinary. I've read the material with an almost religious fidelity. Uh, I read about Rotaract and about Interact and about stay in school and youth leadership and the exchanges which you have promoted so often with young people between the ages of 15 and 30, including stay in school programs for uh, high school. Uh, the hearing clinic at St. Paul's is quite wonderful, but I also note that the clubs have come together uh, to work on dyslexia, to work on developmental handicaps, all of the activity is, is so exemplary in the domestic circumstance, it speaks so well of Rotary. I even went back and read your uh, Rotary strategy workshop, which was held in February, where you itemize the deficits and the attributes which Rotary has in, a, in an entirely forthright and splendid way, filled with candor. You said that one of your deficits was that you were too humble. You didn't talk enough about what you did. Uh, I'm a politician. I'm given to a natural egomania. Uh, but it's, it's good to have a group of people associated with Rotary who recognize how much they do and how it is unnecessary to give it profile unduly.
And all of those things are, of course, an amalgam of what is done here in the domestic environs. But you will understand if I say to you that I'm equally interested and in some ways more interested in what you have done internationally. And in that context, Rotary, of course, also shines. Working with Rotary World Help, I think you heard President Mary say earlier of the extraordinary numbers of shipments of containers which had gone abroad worth now something in excess of $100 million. I saw that some of the clubs associated with Rotary in British Columbia are sending containers to Nepal in the immediate future to deal with the, the reality of leprosy, which uh, is so vexatious and difficult in that country. And again, the ability of Rotary to single out something around which to mobilize and improve the human condition is frankly unrivaled. But most of all, I honor you for your engagement with the struggle against polio. And there's a story to be told. And I sometimes wonder whether Rotarians historically, in terms of the legacy and the antecedents, recognize, understand, recall what an achievement this has been. It's a peculiarly and particularly Canadian achievement. Canada, you will recall, had the scientists who so strongly developed the salt polio vaccine. We were the first country to develop a full program to eliminate polio, which we did in the year 1977. But in the previous years, polio took a terrible toll in Canada. The worst year being 1953, when there were 9,000 cases leading to paralysis. My younger brother, Michael, had polio. He managed to get through it without any scars, but I remember vividly our home in Toronto being covered with fluorescent yellow signs on which was written in dark black lettering, quarantine, poliomyelitis one of the things which uh, racks the soul and was true of so many Canadian families. And we were the first country to join the Global Polio Eradication Initiative, the GPEI it's called, back in 1988 when it was formed. And at that moment in time, the Government of Canada gave a considerable contribution, and the contribution was enhanced constantly by Rotary, and indeed until this most recent past when Rotary has just raised another million six hundred thousand dollars across Canada matched now by the government and by the Gates Foundation going to the heroic and Herculean effort uh, to wipe the scourge off the map of the planet forever. And that Rotary commitment That Rotary commitment in the 1980s and 90s and this last decade was absolutely astonishing. Rotary worldwide contributed well over a billion dollars to the fight against polio. I, I can remember well, I'm here with my, my, my closest uh, colleague from UNICEF days and work we've collaborated on since, Paula Donovan, and, and we can remember in the days when we were at UNICEF at the end of the 19. Uh, 90s when I was the intermediary with Rotary on behalf of UNICEF in, in attempting to raise money, more accurately thanking them for the money they had raised, and how extraordinary it was to travel in the United States and in Canada and to see the determination on the part of one Rotary chapter after another to deal with the advent of polio. And I want to remind you that in 1988, when the campaign began, there were 350,000 cases of paralytic polio in the world every year in 125 countries, taking a human toll, a carnage, which is almost indescribable, a debilitating and paralytic disease leading so often to death, striking very young people. And it says something about the 
inherent decency that suffuses the, the soul of Rotarians that you plunged into combating it so powerfully. And in the year 2012, there were fewer than 225 cases worldwide in only five countries, a 99% decline in that period of time. Now, I, I, I just ask all of you to think of the pain and the suffering you eliminated in the process of saving those kids from irreversible paralysis and death. It was such an easy process. I, I recall in my, in my own mind being in northern Uganda, uh, engaged in a polio immunization day, dropping uh, from a little dropper, uh, drops into the mouth of a protesting babe, but knowing full well that that would protect the child forever. What a, what a contribution to have on, uh, on Rotary's chart. What a legacy to leave. But it's the last push which is turning out to be the toughest, the most uh, difficult of all. Uh, polio is such an infectious disease. The infected person can move it so quickly to the susceptible person. And unless the level of immunity is very, very high, you can't break the chain of transmission from human to human. And the last decade has seen some considerable setbacks. Uh, there was a case in China in the middle of the last decade which appeared to spread to Pakistan and Tajikistan. In 2003, after 10 months of not immunizing children in Nigeria, uh, poliomyelitis spread to 20 countries in West Africa with lightning speed. The huge breakthrough that has occurred has occurred in India, where in the year 2011, it was decreed that India had been free of any case of polio for two years, and this in the country which has the highest infant mortality rate in the world. So the work that was being done around polio became a kind of profile for the way in which global public health should be approached. And now we're watching Chad, Angola, and interestingly enough, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, to see if they can be finally removed from the list this year as having no extant polio cases whatsoever. And there are now only three countries in the world left with polio, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Nigeria. They're the hardest to reach areas, remote and impoverished. There's a lot of opposition to providing the immunization, opposition from traditional leaders, from religious leaders. There are terrible, diabolical, political spasms in December of last year and January of this year, fully 21 healthcare workers working on immunization were killed in both Nigeria and Pakistan because they were felt to be foreign agents representing Western imperialism, or they managed to uh, furbish the suspicion around Western pharmaceutical companies. So at the beginning of this year, chronicled by the World Health Organization and published just this month, in fact, just a week ago, there was a scientific declaration on polio eradication, which was signed by some 400 scientists internationally from 80 countries. And coincident with that, there was an eradication and end game strategic plan, which sets the year 2018 as the target for the final eradication of the last case of polio at a cost of some $5.5 billion between this date and that. The money to be found from governments, from the Gates Foundation, Mayor Bloomberg of New York, a couple of weeks ago from his foundation contributed $100 million. 
from United Nations agencies like UNICEF, but always at the heart of the campaign is Rotary. Because whenever people talk about the final eradication of this public health scourge, it can never be separated from Rotary. And it's all going to those three countries, this strategic plan. And let me just read you a couple of quotes from the plan. Quote, with full implementation of this plan, polio will be the first disease of humans to be eradicated from the earth in the 21st century. Quote, through the global program of uh, polio elimination, more than 10 billion doses of or oral polio vaccine have been administered to more than 2.5 billion children worldwide. More than 10 million people are walking today who would otherwise have been paralyzed. I beg you to think of what you've done. You not often enough appreciate the singular legacy which Rotary has bestowed upon particularly the children of the world with the generosity of spirit which characterizes the work of the organization. Quote, a 2010 analysis of the long-term impact of GPEI estimates that achieving eradication will generate net benefits of at least 40 to 50 billion dollars, mostly in low and middle income countries from 1988 to 2035. And the impact of the polio campaign extends well beyond polio, benefiting other global and country health priorities, support to measles campaign, the distribution of vitamin A supplements, and enhanced global surveillance and response capacity for epidemic prone diseases are just three areas that have benefited from polio eradication staff and infrastructure and delivered clear dividends. And now let me tell you where we stand this year compared to last in the three designated countries. In Afghanistan, there has been one new case reported so far in 2013 compared to six cases at this time last year. In Nigeria, there have been 11 new cases reported so far in 2013 compared to 17 cases at this time last year. In Pakistan, there have been six new cases reported so far in 2013 compared to 15 cases at this time last year. In other words, 18 new cases so far in 2013 compared to 41 at this time last year. And you can see that this extraordinary undertaking, which involves setting out large numbers of volunteers, GPS mapping strategies to find the kids in the most oppressed and underprivileged areas, dealing with the traditional and religious rulers, the Sokoto of, uh, of Nigeria, uh, has come out publicly in support of immunization. The Imam of Pakistan has come out publicly in support of immunization. There is this tremendous mobilization to remove the, the reality of polio from the world forever. And every time everyone talks about it, they talk of Rotary. Because you see, it would not have got off the ground in the 1990s if it hadn't been for the sustaining contributions of the International Rotarian Organization. Rotary taken as a whole internationally is formidable. The local things you do, like the hearing work at St. Paul's, give you that kind of galvanizing spirit which keeps everyone together. But I have to say that a great cause like polio changes and improves the human condition. Rotary has done it once. Rotary can do it again. Congratulations on your 100th birthday. Thank you.